Good afternoon, everyone. Welcome to the ETCFO webinar. I'm Vartika, the moderator for today, and we would like to thank all of you for tuning in today. The webinar, the weather in Delhi NCR is bright and sunny with moderate temperature. As September is the time for transition, so is the point of our conversation. Today's webinar discusses the ETCFO's, the CFO's edge, understanding the value shift with digitalization and explores how CFOs can help in this transition, which is no longer option, optional for any modern day corporate. We hope today's session will prepare you for the year ahead. With this, we have with us two really good speakers who between them bring the expertise, experience and wisdom. Please join me in welcoming Prabeen Dukanya, CFO of the technology backbone of goods and services tax, the GST network, and the expert Guru Prasad Gankar, who is responsible for, digi for digital transformation orchestration across industries. He is the APAC SaaS leader for Oracle in Japan and Asia Pacific countries. We will begin with short opening statement by each of the speakers, followed by an interactive session. We request all the participants to keep sending your question on the private chat window. In the interest of using time productively, we will collate them and present them to the speakers. Also, before we, re before we begin, request you all to just spare a few minutes to answer a very brief poll. All right, so, so we're receiving a lot of responses here. So the question is, how would you identify your finance function in the organization? So 64% of the participants say uh, they're innovators, they're setting up models for the rest. And 27% say they're waiting and watching for the next innovation and they'll work accordingly. And 9% of uh, the people are saying that uh, they would use tried and tested models for their organization great so uh, moving on i think for all these things cfos really need to gear up to be digital cfos digital cfos i think digital cfo is one of the most uh, popular terms associated with the finance function in recent times perhaps it is one of the most misunderstood misunderstood terms too so let's deconstruct what digitalization actually means for cfos and what it requires from finance professionals and other functions. I would like to invite Prabhin Dukanya to take off this conversation from here. Hi, Mr. Dukanya, over to you. Uh, thank you, Vartika, uh, to set the context on very rightly that uh, what is digitalization and how it is overrated or underrated. So let me begin with how the finance function is traditionally and going forward is looks like. So finance function uh, is generally it's a stand with 5C. It's a cost, control, compliances, communication, and then custodian. Generally, it's said that finance uh, is the custodian of the asset, custodian of the data and all. So all these five is the important pillar for any of the finance profession, any of the CA or the senior finance executive in the company. So digitalization, when we see that digitalization, so we have to identify each one of the pillars that how it's going to impact and how it's going to uh, uh, take on advantage on that. Let's uh, go along with the cost. So how the digitalization is going to improve the cost metrics of any organization, how the digitalization is going to simplify the things and how the digitalization is uh, helping redu uh, reducing the cost better production planning in case of a manufacturing company, in case of a service company, how the um, uh, like integration of the various verticals so that um, the cost structure, cost planning can be done in a better way. And whereas in uh, like in a compliance set, so most of the CFOs 
traditional CFOs, 50% of their time spent on compliances. And uh, these are days where everything is going, even the government and regulatory bodies, they are going into digital mode, like my uh, GST and itself. We are prompting and doing the major tax reform of the country and where we are prompting every each and every individual, every taxpayer, every uh, dealer, every trader to go in a digital mode. Earlier, which was in, uh, I mean, uh, into like manual mode and which takes a lot hell of their time. So that time gained, they can focus on their core business. So that's a, on the compliance side. I think it's a, it's a, one of the biggest challenge for the CFOs that how to simplify the compliances, how to make the compliances really error free and on time. So that's a, whereas I think the digital is going to help a lot where the data, the submission of a data, the efficient tool where it can interact with the other platform where the return has to be filed like income tax or GST return and so many other compliances. So that's a that's a one challenge and it will really make CFO sleep in a full way. So that's a compliances part. And third, uh, most important thing is like if you see that uh, custodian, custodian of a data. So most of the in the most of the organization in a mediocre organization, CFO takes care of the total. IT function as well, and he has to take care of the various data, data security, and other things. So if you go on a digital, and particularly how the data is going to store, what could be the security policy, how it's going to take this forward and all. So here the role of digitalization can come on. And then the third one is the control aspect. So fourth one. So control is a major aspect for any CFO that every system process are inbuilt so that any kind of a risk associated with those process can be taken care of. So, so that's the important thing for any CFO that inbuilt controls are so strong with the help of technologies so that the mitigation of risk or any instant of a risk can be immediately identified. So the control process, make the process simplifier for the user in case of a, uh, for the other executive for making any decision so that the process can be simplified. So that's a, I understand. So those five parameters for any of the CFOs is very important and they have to, one has to see that how that can be integrated with the best technology and increase the efficiency because these are the days CFOs Earlier CFOs are told CFO should be active, then proactive. But these are days CFOs has to be predictive. They have to foresee the future. And in any company, CFO plays a major role in uh, predicting the business strategy, designing the business strategy, the predict the, the requirement of a cash flow, the resource management and everything. So that's my take on this. I think Guru can add something on it if you want. Guru, would you like to add anything to this? No, I think uh, uh, Prabin has obviously stolen the show. He's, he's given a clear perspective as a practitioner himself on, on, on the role of the CFO. Uh, obviously, I will, we'll touch a little bit more upon that uh, when we talk about uh, setting the future state of finance. All right. So I think uh, very rightly put, uh, uh, Praveen, that, you know, CFO is a custodian of data today. And, you know, the main responsibility for CFO is to convert data into insights, empowering the right function in the organization, you know, to use it. So uh, I think uh, with this, we have time for another poll question. Uh, and here is the question. So emerging technologies such as uh, robotic processing automation, machine learning, artificial intelligence, blockchain technology, and so on are relevant for finance function. What do you think, participants? Yeah, I 
I think we're getting a really good response here. So most of the people think that yes, 87% of the participants think that yes, it is relevant. It is very relevant in today's time. So uh, moving on, uh, so this brings us to the point, uh, why are we talking about digital transformation now? What is this value shift that we're talking about? And I would like to ask Guru to share his expertise and experience as he has been working with Office of Finance, Operation, Information Technology, and Digital Supply Chain. So over to you, Guru. Okay, I think, uh, thanks, Vatika, and uh, thank you, Prabin, for stepping up the temperature uh, on, on this topic. So what I'm going to do is uh, talk a little bit more about the future state of finance. And I'm going to uh, benchmark it on the PwC report, which talks about um, finance effectiveness uh, as of 2017. And it's more about uh, the, the effectiveness um, you know, going forward. Uh, typically, I would actually start by asking questions to the CFOs uh, of what has been their observation in terms of the role of the CFO uh, having changed in the last um, eight to 10 years. And many actually share with me that it has changed, but it has not been significantly changed. The second question I would start with asking CFOs is that, how do you think is your role and office as a finance in your function is going to change in the next eight to 10 months? And that is where I see many of those hands go up. Um, and I want to bring that topic to, to what I want to discuss here is that with the advent of ERPs, we have seen that the role of bookkeepers was completely eliminated. So bookkeepers started doing an accountant's role, accountant started to do a controller's role, and a controller started to do a CFO's role. The question is more about what is the role of the CFO and what is the CFO doing today? In our observation, most of the CFOs today are actually doing a controller's role, whereas the board or uh, the CEO are expecting the CFOs to have more of a decision support as compared to transaction support, uh, which is what most of the CFOs have been doing as of yesterday or even rather today. And because of which finance is seen as a cost to the business, not adding the same level of value. So this is where, you know, I mean, uh, I would ask many of uh, our colleagues in finance uh, to basically, um, you know, take assume the role of the future state of finance and take that challenge to be able to introduce new practices, new technologies, bring in new skills that increase uh, that capacity to, to do business. I would like to also uh, take a little bit further to share in terms of, you know, um, again, uh, taking that report of uh, further from PwC to share with you on what has been the role that finance has been focusing on as of today. And as you can see, it is spread across right from planning to transactional support to control to compliance and advice. Uh, but where are we going to see in terms of the state of finance or the future state of finance? Uh, and I would like to share a perspective that was done based on the survey uh, with all, most of the CFOs. It specifically focused on three things. Number one, very much focused on plan, uh, which is around uh, strategy and performance as compared to transactional support. Second, uh, you know, with, with evolving business model and digitization of processes, you will see new headcount structure, new skills, new uh, practices being adopted, uh, especially when it comes to report, compliance, and, 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 and account. And third, we will see a lot of uh, balancing where the question to the CFO is not going to be what cannot be done, what can be done, more in terms of what can be achieved uh, with uh, what has been done, um, you know, uh, as a function already. So that is where we're going to see a, a lot of focus on, um, sorry, I think I've got a little bit of problem with my screen here. So, okay. So, you know, I want to talk to you about a little bit about the pace of change. Um, and obviously you are aware uh, with very much what's happening from a regulation and compliance perspective, competition perspective and technology perspective. The perspective that I'm going to share with you is not about the pace of change, but the question on what is the ability of your organization to respond to this change and the risk that you carry if you're not able to uh, respond to the pace at which it is expected. Uh, then a little bit of more perspective in terms of where we're heading as finance as a function. What you see on the left hand side is a current state of headcount. And if you had to go back and reflect the state of headcount in your own organization, and I see that there are 52 uh, or, or 60 plus participants on this call you would see that most of your headcounts is very much focused on transaction processing, processing AR, processing AP, you know, those kind of discussions. Uh, but there's a lot of focus on reporting and compliance and very less on insight and action. 
the way we see this going, especially with automation, where there's going to be a drastic reduction in transaction processing and that pyramid is going to invert, where there's going to be a lot of focus on strategy and performance management with insight and action, and it's going to taper down in terms of focus on transaction processing. And this is where uh, you know, the enablers of such a model is going to come from these core elements, be it analytics, process mining, cloud, blockchain, and robotics. But from our view of this world, cloud is going to be the foundation of this uh, fundamental value shift, as Vatika put it, uh, precisely for three reasons. Number one, uh, cloud is going to translate to speed in finance, uh, keeping you continuous up to date on technology, but also keeping you up to date on evolving direction of compliance and regulation from a business point of view as well. Second, it's going to eliminate most of those complexities that come with organizational procedures and processes uh, putting into a new uh, business model. And third, it is going to give you access to sophisticated tools in data science, embedded analytics, visualization, statistics at economical price points. So just want to give, leave you with that thought in terms of how cloud is going to be the foundational enabler for this shift from current state headcount to future state headcount. Now, obviously, there's more to discuss about it uh, in this panel, um, as well as you know, uh, more in person. So we also uh, would like to welcome you to some of the sessions that we are doing as Oracle uh, at uh, Mumbai, as well as Delhi. Uh, so for you to take note of it and join us uh, for the sessions. We call those uh, sessions as Impact for Business, uh, precisely to help you to upgrade to that modern finance function and that value shift with the role of the CFO. Over to you, Vartika. Thank you, Guru. Uh, Guru, you said something about the risk that uh, the finance function will, the finance leaders will carry if they do not move with the speed of uh, digital. So, uh, can you throw some more light uh, on it? Can you please explain it a little more? What are the risks? Yeah. So, look. You know, I mean, if you look at, uh, if you look at what are CFO, CFOs expected or what are the priorities that CFOs are focusing on? There are four key priorities as we see. Number one is automation. And you know, I mean, if, 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 if uh, we were to follow the promise of cloud that is already delivering, um, that is, there is an option to completely eliminate ARAP, especially with automation, uh, as, with the use of robotic process automation. Now the risk here of not getting onto this is to missing on those cost effectiveness that come with uh, those kind of automation. And we could talk about simple scenarios as invoice entry to settlement, uh, you know, of scanning those invoices using machine learning and robotics to fast track uh, those uh, aspects of uh, uh, settlement into cost entities, et cetera, and manage by exception. So this is where we would talk about automation. The second aspect we would talk about is, you know, what is the ability of the current CFOs and Prabhin touched upon it uh, in, in his conversation to own data and insight. You're not talking about owning reports, but owning data and insight to the business. So that is the second risk that, you know, uh, finance as a function carries of not being able to come across as a business owner or a business partner in decision making. The third is around creating an impact. Now, obviously, we, we know that you know finance has an access to a lot of those functions on how uh, the hygiene of the organization is working. So how is that uh, finance is embedding those decisions in other functions? A classic example in pro professional services industry, which is traditionally cash rich and a lot of access to liquidity, bringing that uh, into an action for procurement to be able to do early payment discounting. So we are talking about impacting decision making in finance, in HR, in procurement, in uh, warehouse, uh, you know, in supply chain as, 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 as creating that impact. And finally, you know, uh, shape. How is finance as an organization driving the shape of the organization by collaborating with industry uh, ecosystem? So the risk of do nothing uh, is, is no longer an option. Um, so keeping up the space is the way forward from the way we see uh, of Office of Finance as a function. All right. Uh, so, you know, uh, you said that there's going to be an, in, that you were talking about an inverted pyramid where you're saying that in, insights and actions are going to take most of the time for CFOs. So, you know, uh, Mr. Dukanya, you know, in this age of information and data abundance, you know, what are the challenges of, uh, you know, generating insights? You know, as you said, that CFO uh, is now has a predictive role, right? So, you know, what are your challenges in doing so? See, uh, like uh, there is a ample of data, 
there is a plenty of data in the everywhere so cfo or anybody who's going to predict who is to take a strategy who has to plan a strategy for a planning so data should be meaningful data and in the data lake kind of a thing one has to dive down and get that uh, like they say like when you dive down and get the fruitful data which is enable you to make decision easy make to take your decision to make you to make your future fast so so among those data which data is going to help so one has to plan that like uh, what guru has said in case of a apr so data meaningful data should be that uh, for a cfo's dashboarding kind of a thing how's the i mean uh, data outstanding the timeline of outstanding how the recovery cycle what is the cash flow position how the from the any particular geographical area some ar or ap is uh, not uh, coming and something i think i could have missed it so uh, those kind of information is uh, going to help the cfo and particularly uh, like uh, resource mobilization for any manufacturing company or other thing for a managing the total cash flow and the current asset current cash he has to plan that what is the future production uh, production a cycle would be based on the demand forecasting demand forecasting again come from the sales team from the market and sales team again depend on the field representative and the various channel partner so all are kind of a cyclic kind of a thing and the various data ultimately the source of data uh, is uh, from the real market to to the uh, dashboard of a cfo and cao and decision maker so that's a flow of data one has to see that how the valuable and the best use uh, data can be uh, done in that way all right so guru uh, any any uh, any i mean any suggestion on how cfos can efficiently use uh, data and convert it into uh, right and useful uh, insights yes i think certainly you know and i think prapin uh, touched upon uh, the typical challenges that the cfos are facing today and 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 what and if you see if you if you were to closely observe uh, you know uh, prapin's conversation it 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 appears to me you know the same challenge that is being faced by many cfos is the challenge of technology is left to the cfos to figure out either together with their it organization or by themselves and this is where we, we you know uh, there is an expect that there, there needs to an expectation from CFOs that you know these come with business outcome from the platform that they use to run their finance function. So what's happening is that you know reporting is a separate function. FP&A is becoming more of a reporting organization as compared to an insight organization. So the way we see technology empowering this is by embedding decision making based on data into business processes and where reporting is not a separate function that runs in parallel to business process but it is embedded as part of decision making and this is where many of those insights are going to translate into action for the cfos to focus on the role that they need to function with rather than they focusing on uh, technology and tools uh, and 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 you know and skilling them on on things that do not matter beyond finance function that's that's that that would be a view that i would like to share all right and you know uh, as per our poll as well you know uh, all these emerging technology uh, robotic process uh, processing uh, automation machine learning artificial intelligence all of this uh, is so very relevant for our participants for finance function today so you know uh, what i mean uh, i this question goes to you prabin you know uh, how should uh, you know technology decisions are really becoming important in digital transformation journey for any cfo so you know how are you making that decision uh, what are the challenges of you know taking the technology technology decision for a cfo see the tech, uh, again like what guru says and in a, uh, these days like uh, we can see that technology is changing day in day out every day we can see that the new version of window or new something is coming on like uh, even the in case of ai blockchain and all so uh, day in day out new technology is coming and one has to be adaptive on that so for a cfo he has to uh, see the present uh, he has to do a swat analysis kind of a thing for his function for his business organization that what is going to best 
uh, for him like if you take the blockchain technology though the many of the countries in advanced world and developed country they will start using that but so far in india it's not very popular and coming days it's going to be so in that case the role of a audit third party verification and other thing is going to be vanish in coming days because well you do that the blockchain kind of a thing so you know the truth of the transaction and everybody is like in a chain one has to verify and do the things so those kind of a thing is coming days so one has to uh, properly uh, i mean put his in mind that which technology he is going to do uh, based on their organizational setup based on their uh, adoptiveness of the that technology and the usefulness so not only for the sake of technology we are going to adopt one technology or maybe uh, down the line in coming year or coming so uh, uh, with uh, which is not going to help them like in case of erp we have seen that it, uh, so many words and so many other things is coming so one has to see that roi aspect as well from the finance perspective roi aspect uh, as well while investing on the technology that which technology is going to invest and how is it going to uh, benefit them all right guru. and guru, guru what should it. what yeah so <laughs> guru uh, what are your uh, i mean what are the key things to keep in mind you know while taking technology decision according to you yeah i think let me let me share with you what uh, cfos have shared with me so uh, you know because i've been doing this round tables across india and we did that across uh, four cities in india so there are three fundamental decision routes that cfos have taken uh, today uh, there are a set of custom there are a set of cfos uh, that we have met who have said that okay you know we we want to focus on operational efficiencies we want to focus on business partnering uh, we want to focus on automation so these are customers who have said you know we would like to upgrade ourselves to modern finance as a straight away function for us to be relevant to the future state of finance so that is one um, uh, set of customers there is a second set of uh, you know um, cfos who have said that uh, you know uh, we have a current uh, technology platform that we are currently running so uh, you know if we were to so they they have shared with us the challenges that they they would face if they were to continue the business practices that are done in the past which is you know continue on the same platform and go through painful process of upgrading that from a technology perspective and go through those risk of of uh, of uh, getting them up to up to speed and there is a third set of cfos who have asked us what is the shortest route to get to where we want to get and this is where you know our recommendation would be is to look at what you have today and see if there is an option for you to upgrade yourself to the modern finance function uh, as a like to like because then you get access to a foundation on which you can start your journey of transformation rather than going through a painful process of transformation where the time to value is long and the risk is unknown so this would this would be you know our view based on the various conversation that cfos have shared with us all right so uh, you know earlier we were talking about te cloud technology i think uh, uh, prabin you have also moved to cloud technology so what 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 was i mean what uh, what was your approach you know moving towards uh, cloud technology and you know according to your experience uh, how has that that translated to scale your business see uh, cloud is in any way it's a cost effective and it's a, it will enable your business to grow like anything i mean and you will able to get the, all the efficient uh, technological tools and all and for a primarily what i can see for a uh, not a big size of a business for a medium size of a business and all cloud is always efficient to move into it, it will be the first step towards moving to digitalization if they are uh, not uh, ready to invest much or on end prem on prem uh, that servers and other things and on prem uh, technology so then cloud is the best option it will enable them to uh, move into that uh, modern technologies and then cost effective and efficiently so so that's in a sort i can say that it's a it will be the first step towards digitalization for uh, most of the business organization 
All right. All right. So, uh, Guru, what are the digital opportunities for leading the future finance function? You were talking about that earlier. Yeah, I think, you know, uh, I think obviously it gets gets back to the, the four fundamentals that we talked about is one is, you know, the opportunity to to, to automation and that has a, a significant impact, not not just from a cost effectiveness perspective, but also from an operational efficiency. Um, second, we talked about uh, the ability to own data and insight. And this is where we, you know, the opportunity to embed analytics into action from a business process perspective. And third is, you know, I mean, we talked about creating an impact for them to partner with other uh, departments and finally to, to shape the organization. And I think, you know, the, the overall opportunity, as I see with these four things is we talked about the future state of finance. I think the fundamental question is uh, how, what is your plan as an organization to upgrade to modern finance as a function? And how do you want to get there? I think this is how I would say are the fundamental drivers or the fundamental levers and the potential uh, where, where technology can help. All right. So, uh, you know, we have uh, in our participants, we also have uh, IT leaders. Uh, so I just want to ask you this one question. Uh, how how can CFOs, CIOs, CISO, COOs, you know, how can all of them work in tandem towards this digital transformation journey? Because it, it is not just a finance project. It is a, a collaborative uh, project that every that in the organization, everybody has to, you know, uh, go along. So uh, how can they work in tandem, uh, Guru? Yeah, I think, you know, uh, if you had to let's take a role of a ceo and if you look at the agenda that is on the ceos uh, or the board's um, you know mandate uh, the focus is on growth and the focus is on revenue growth or increasing you know um, number of customers and there is there is always a focus you know if you are one of those digital native companies to focus on um, increasing the valuation of the company so the question here is what is the cfo's role uh, to be able to drive that and if you are to take two fundamental question uh, how can cfo uh, take a role when it comes to uh, improving customer experience or for that matter you know what is the participation of the cfo's role when it comes to driving innovation and the examples that i could share from some of our own customers who have gone through this journey uh, cfos are partnering in helping with business case validation uh, to make sure to understand uh, what does the business case look like more as an enabler rather than a blocker uh, second is, you know, how can uh, CFOs help to um, run those ideas, you know, be it in a startup or in existing mature industries organization uh, to help those uh, new ideas being implemented leaner from a cost efficiency perspective. And third, you know, uh, if you look at some of those innovations that are being rolled out, many of those comes with a lot of tax incentives. So the question here is that how are CFOs helping those business leaders be in sales be in marketing be in development uh, take benefit of those uh, tax in, in, uh, you know um, incentives so the role of the cfo is more than sitting in that room or operating that office of finance function and producing that report on ask but more to step outside to you know to see what can be done in procurement what can be done in innovation what can be done in customer experience what can be done in marketing or even for that matter, improving supply chain efficiencies with the suppliers. So there's a lot of role to play uh, for the CFO to be able to participate. But again, you know, most of the CFOs, as Prabin sent out, is, is is dependent on some of the capabilities that the Office of Finance needs, not just from a technology perspective, but also from a skills and headcount and structure perspective. So obviously, there is a board, there is a seat at the board that is available for the CFO to be able to influence and direct the decision uh, with that empowerment. All right, and Prabin, what what are your views uh, regarding this? Yeah, I agree. I fully agree with the Guru. Like uh, Guru said, it's a safer's role is not limited only to the current function, because CFO is the one. Because in any business organization, ultimately it's a money. It's all about the finance. When the money comes, then the growth is there, and then business will grow. So. And the custodian of the total money and finance is supposed to be the CFO. So he has to step in in every function, every vertical, where the if it by efficiency, the the valuation, the value can be created, like in supply chain, what Guru has said, 
by putting the technology we can reduce the timeline of uh, the supply chain and that could be one of the cost measure cost control tool and by procurement only the procurement if you can uh, do that uh, through digitalization the procurement process can be simplified the procurement process where the vast number of larger number of vendor can be on board and uh, you can procure in a very cost effective way and in the like way the sales function the sales function is the one of the key function where the every ceo and uh, other persons uh, the focus is in so to get the how the customer traction can be done it's again through technology so it's a it's a collaborative kind of a thing and the, where there is a, always uh, in any of the organization where the change is taking place so always that change has uh, driven generally it has uh, seen that it's, uh, the change is driven through the finance role through the cfo's uh, desk only the change is initiated from there only so so cfo has to take a lead on the digitalization total digitalization process and in collaboration with the various support other function as well it's a hand to hand all right very rightly said sir uh, and we're also getting some audience questions uh, so i'll just ask you uh, this this one question is uh, please explain the trend on digitalization and its relevance for construction and real estate companies companies like ours uh, can you uh, who who would want to take it, Guru? Yeah, I can. I can uh, give a head start to it, and probably Prabin can add to it. So, if you if you if you look at, you know, I mean, first of all, I would like to fundamentally differentiate um, uh, the meaning of the word digitalization and digitization. Uh, you know, most of the CFOs have already done digitization because you've got many of your processes already on some sort of technology so you have to a degree digitized many of those of those things digitalization is about improving enabling business process you know uh, people uh, in in tent incorporating digitization so let's be clear that digitalization is an overarching thing uh, you know where digitization is a part of it now, if you had to fundamentally agree on that, you know, and if you had to go back to this question on construction and engineering um, example, um, there's a huge shift in terms of how uh, compliance has impacted many of these industries. You have seen that, you know, with IFRS 16 and IFRS uh, 15, uh, the way you recognize the revenue has fundamentally shifted and thereby in terms of how you report profits. And obviously you will see more of this coming from a regulation perspective. Uh, second, you would see that, you know, especially in India and in most of those uh, companies in construction and engineering, they do not have a land bank issue. The issue is more about realizing those product on time, on uh, budget uh, and on profit, uh, both from a customer perspective as well from their own internal revenue recognition perspective. Now, this is where we believe that, you know, uh, uh, technology and more so cloud becomes a foundation uh, for most of these engineering and construction companies to number one, to stay up to date on evolving direction of regulation, be it IFRS or be it other regulation that comes uh, for finance. And second, to build out finance into project and portfolio management to be able to recognize that revenue uh, with respect to completion of project, et cetera. So obviously, you know, uh, there are role to play for, for engineering construction uh, industry per se uh, from, from a technology perspective. And of course, you know, there are some broader aspects that apply not just to engineering and technology, uh, engineering and construction industry, but also to other industries, which is taking benefit of use cases in artificial intelligence, machine learning, uh, to, to embark on sophisticated tools in data science and statistics, etc. So just to give you a perspective on things that apply to this specific industry, but also for the broader aspect of other industries beyond engineering and construction. I mean, over to you, Prabin, if, if there's any aspects that you think that you should be adding from, from your own observation as well. Uh, you have uh, rightly said that uh, the, uh, all the points you have touched upon, but if you, uh, I would like to add two or three practical kind of aspects of the things that are generally uh, mm -hmm. the traditional property market and real estate market is uh, one to one, but uh, the already we are seeing the shifting, even one can purchase uh, one rupees of a flat over the uh, net it's a uh, through the e-com sites and all so people have that kind of a trust so one has to see the shifting of the consumer base so most of the customer even on the real estate if they are purchasing on the technological platform so one has to do the social media marketing in a very 
efficient way the real estate company like uh, in the facebook and other things so earlier which is not very common particularly in the real estate segment so that's uh, when pragmatic safe and then when it has to the real estate market is generally end user driven and the investor driven where the uh, reputation is also there so if they can manage the crm kind of a thing on a very efficient way or with the help of technology then the automatic the customer traction would be there and in the cost the in the real estate uh, segment the cost matrix is the cost overrun is and time overrun is the prime concern for any of the things which is drive the customer and as our well, the real estate developer both are suffering and where the technology can chip in the better project management better uh, these are days uh, like if you book any property you can see the real time how the construction is going on so that can create a trust so it's all uh, with the help of technology and other things so that's a uh, on a practical aspect my two words on this yeah well, maybe i will well, yeah. add what you here Sure, Guru. Please carry on. Yeah, I think you know Prabhin added a very valid point. Uh, Prabhin added a quite a valid point here. You know, uh, he actually touched upon the demand that was uh, traditionally created through uh, uh, more of a physical interaction, and that has shifted to a more of a digital interaction. You know, obviously he touched upon engineering and construction where you could actually create that demand through through e-commerce, uh, and the same applies to retail, logistics, and many other companies out there. I mean, here this is where we see the role of CFO to step beyond traditional function to see how do we recognize this re revenue, uh, and second also how do we monetize, especially uh, with evolving pricing structures, uh, for us to be able to recognize that revenue which wouldn't have existed in the previous model or the previous business model. So, so again, you know, as you can see that there are opportunities for the CFOs to work with the CEO, with the uh, COO on aspects beyond traditional finance, um, you know, uh, including, you know, recognizing revenue. So these are things that CFOs need to keep in mind to bear with the future state of finance and the evolving business model and their own role uh, to be able to step up at a, as a business partner. All right. Uh, thank you, Guru. So, uh, you know, we have another question. Uh, this is that how do you envisage the audit as practice will, sorry, how do you envisage the audit as, as practice will evolve in the future? And will, will it be more self-regulated or the audit shall die a natural death? So I think the question says that how do you envisage the audit function and the audit practice going forward and how will it evolve in the future? And do you think that it will be more self-regulated or uh, the audit uh, will die a natural death? If so, how do you think the investor's interest should be taken care of? Prabeen, would okay. you like to take this? Uh, okay. uh, let me take that. Uh, correctly said, like uh, I was discussing about that blockchain. So in the coming days, like generally in a traditional audit, one has to see that uh, the truthness of the transaction, the genes generation of the transaction, the genesis of the transaction. Like if you're moving through that uh, blockchain technology, then blockchain technology automatically the trail where where the transaction is started and the end point when automatically through digitalization process, so that process one can verify when can be make sure that this transaction the authentic of the transaction the truthness of the transaction but I, I i i don't agree that the audit will die because uh, for the investor uh, there is always a third party uh, that uh, certification is always requ required where you, you can trust on somebody that he is certifying so somebody has one investor can rely on, like we know sometimes that what are the medicine we need to take, but still we go to doctor and get that medicine prescribed. The, so, so that kind of a trust and belief. So in that same way that uh, one has to rely and trust on the auditor, though you can uh, verify the transaction, we can do that, that. But but that confidence and other things, one auditor can always build on on the investor. Over to you, Guru, if you want to add something. <laughs> yeah, no, I like your example of uh, the doctor. Uh, is basically, you know, you would go a doctor uh, uh, for prescription. 
uh, also to adding to that you know i mean uh, my own personal experience is that you know i would google first see if those prescriptions are real based on various comments that come with that and then decide whether it's worthwhile uh, to visit a doctor as you know it's a little bit expensive in singapore to to attend to healthcare and i believe the same applies to many many cities in in india uh, just to leverage on that example into audit and i like that and, and i precisely like that example for that i would say there will be a fundamental shift also in terms of what audit does today uh, to what what the audit do in future you know uh, prabin talked about blockchain so i mean the fundamental premise of introducing this new technologies which is blockchain or for that matter cloud as a foundation is is giving that increasing transparency in terms of how things have been done and so we would you know the way i would see is that audit as a function those basic transparency that uh, that technology will be able to provide will significantly increase which means that audit as a function will probably get into more defining of uh, you know, value added criteria that needs to be taken into account to make sure that stays uh, true so do we see audit as a function being completely eliminated uh, the answer would be no uh, but would we see the audit as a function uh, elevating to a next state of um, audit with with improving technology with improve with the incorporation of new technology within finance function i would say the answer is yes all right so uh, one last question uh, that we're going to take is uh, how should cfos look at their cost restructuring with this digital transition and prabin can you please share uh, your experience in this cost can you so, so so the question is how should cfos look at their cost restructuring with this transition to digital and uh, please share your experience see it's, it's, it's a uh, very valid thing because the cost control cost reduction is the one of the prime uh, focus area for uh, any of the cfo for a value creation and for increase the profitability and to increase the shareholder value so in the traditional way the cost cutting and other thing is uh, through the uh, like uh, you fly on a normal economic class or something stay in a cheap hotel and other thing but through the, i'm just giving one simple example but uh, through digitalization and through automation process and all and cfo can control a little a very fundamental right away the cost with my own experience i i, I can say that uh, through uh, putting the digital in a place through with an it enabler one can reduce the cost by 20 to 30 percent in any of the like in procurement procurement like traditional way you procure that's a one thing and one one way if you can uh, get the like uh, i've explained earlier if you procure through the digital mode get the vendor get the larger broader aspects of the vendor larger vendor and other things so you can have uh, these are days there are too many b2b platform where you can really compare the price and most of the mediocre size or big company they have a tie up the same way in the logistic way logistic the traditional way of hiring the uh, transporter and other things has gone so where the people go and a revigo revigo kind of a things where the efficiency of the truck owner and transporter has increased and they run on a really kind of a model where you can create and generate the 150% of efficiency of your resource so if you can utilize your resource by 150% 120% automatically in a, it, it will convert into the money and value of in finance and rupee so 20% cost saving is in any way you are generating on that way in the same way on a admin part kind of a thing these are days we are using all the tools and other things where all this uh, make my trip yatra and all they are uh, providing the corporate tool where one can book tickets uh, efficiently and uh, in a cost effective way so there is a small small example in a total business value cycle in the total business value chain if you fragment one one of the process one of the activity you can easily see that with the help of technology you can reduce the cost you can shift the things on a better efficient way when you increase the efficiency automatically you you are able to cost uh, save the cost Do all right uh, actually we have another question uh, if 
could you please give few examples of business processes where blockchain technology is currently being used in india so guru yeah i think you know i mean um, would i have examples of brands that i can outright name of use cases at this stage um not at the moment that i would like to publish without the permission but let me talk about use cases that are being discussed and being uh, prototyped uh, where uh, people would like to start experimenting with that now if you look at um, you know if you look at a simple use case of um, uh, from uh, from let's say from sourcing of supply to suppliers and agreeing those uh, payment conditions or for that matter the penalty conditions of receipt of goods and thereby the implication of, on tax all this information can be captured on a distributed ledger not just from a records perspective but also from a payment registry perspective uh, that would mean that you know number one collaboration with suppliers uh, to be able to provide that information on the same um, wavelength of blockchain that you are working with and the readiness of uh, regulatory such as tax authorities for uh, for them to be able to share this information so most of the blockchain use cases that we see are very much uh, being experimented in environment where there is a control of those or collaboration of those um, stakeholders um, you know um, be it suppliers be it other departments within the organization or be it with other business partners that these organizations work with Uh, but there is a lot of scope to expand that uh, beyond this into organizations such as tax authorities uh, you know revenue departments or port authorities etc and this is where we will see uh, where we see an opportunity to 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 expand beyond that um, just again coming to the core crux of your question um, is yes there are being cases that are being prototyped and experimented and if this is something that are, would be of interest to you then you know we would be more than happy to 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 experiment that with you as well um, but i wouldn't be able to name brands that we are doing with uh, without their permission at this stage all right thank you guru uh, so uh, as we are approaching towards the end of our webinar uh, i'll just uh, have quick questions for both of you so uh, starting with what are the key actions for cfos going forward the learn unlearn and then again lead learn the new technology in a simple oh. one word all right <laughs> it's a rapid fire kind of a thing i believe <laughs> <laughs> no we have a little more time than that but okay guru no i think you know number one uh, cfos recognize that the future state of finance is significantly different to the current state of finance and that gap is overwhelming so i think recognizing that the future state of finance is is, is the first step second i think is to look at compelling business benefits of taking that journey <coughs> to future state of finance and third would be working with business partners you know who could help to um, upgrade that particular finance function uh, to modern finance that would be my view all right and what does the yes sir please continue i agree with uh, guru like in short i have uh, told that but uh, effectively what guru said once the uh, cfo has to uh, go uh, along with the total things i mean it's, it's all collaborative collective and uh, moving forward the future and how the best utilization of uh, any technology can be done all right and what and, does the future finance function look like Yeah, future finance function is uh, uh, like uh, we have discussed uh, so far. It's uh, all the future finance is a business enabler role, strategy role, planning role. It's a uh, not old traditional on the compliance, accounting, and other things. It's uh, all about business part partnering role. So one has to be hand to hands go along with the other other vertical of a business, and then he has to be part of that that growth. It's uh, not only the custodian. it's so not only the bookkeeping it's not only the the compliance it's a total business enabler business uh, growth uh, role for the cfo because he is the key strategy maker for any of the he is the one who who is uh, going for a ipo who is the one who plan for a ipo so 
and when you plan for ipo so you have to have that vision and horizon for two three years four years uh, growth strategy or long term growth strategy for the company he has to one has to face this, the investor so he has to that kind of a vision in mind that when the investor will ask that how the profitability will go on and how the things will move on so he should answer that he was able to answer that so so that uh, mindset of a cfo is uh, getting changed it's uh, totally shifting from the compliance as to growth all right so uh, any closing comments uh, guru let's start with you yeah no i think uh, you know I, I i actually would like to go back to that survey that you did where uh, there was a significant percentage which said that they would like to look look at people who have done that in the past um, um, the only thing i would leave you with you know with taking into account the future state of finance um, there are a lot of cfos out there in india as well as in asia pacific and globally who have taken this journey of upgrading their core mm -hmm. finance function to modern finance so there's a huge opportunity to to take a lot of learnings as well as some of the challenges that they faced on the journey because it wasn't smooth in 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 some cases uh, and and take those into 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 account mm -hmm. and i think that would be uh, my view to leave you with to to learn from your peers or you know get those learnings from your peers and have your own learnings and share it with others uh, as you take this uh, journey would i which i would like to conclude as calling it as upgrading to modern finance uh, rather than a transformation been any closing comments for me yes sir yeah so the like um, guru has said correctly it's a, for a modern days finance uh, professional he has to i mean all learn and uh, get away from few of the old traditional thought and chip in into and step in into the new thought that he has the business enabler he has the uh, he has to write the growth strategy along with the ceo so that's uh, when he uh, himself thinks as a business partner in role so automatically the attitude mindset will change and then he think on a way the business go away in business things so one has to adopt the new technology that's uh, another thing so when when he thinks on it that way so automatically he thinks on a technology platform one has to think the technology how the real time decision can be taken how the business decision can be enabled so those kind of a thing how the growth parameter can be defined how the other uh, function other vertical can be integrated on a and one can think on a single platform so those kind of a things one has to take away that's a, i can say only this all right uh, so we are almost at the end of the webinar now and uh, you know before we go Oracle is hosting an impact for business summit on September 26th in Bombay and uh, September 28th in New Delhi. For further details, do visit ETCFO's webinar page. On behalf of the participants and ETCFO team, I thank the speakers for sparing their precious time and addressing the queries in this webinar. Many thanks. I also thank the webinar attendees for their enthusiastic participation. It really is your feedback that makes ETCFO tick. Many, many thanks. We hope to be back with another interesting topic soon. Thank you, everyone. Thank you. Thank you, all the participants, and have a good day. Thank you.